All right, so we've got another light in front of my face, so hopefully it lights it up a little better. But here we are, we're back. We're back with this challenge of drawing until this pen refill finally runs out. And let me share some of the drawings that I did. So I've been doing these this challenge for about 30 hours now. Not not all at once, but you know, different times. I'm trying to find a good angle that I could show these. And uh, some of these are taken more seriously than others. Uh, some of them are just random random doodling, just trying to get as much ink out of this pen as possible. You can tell that some of the ink has started to run out over here, but definitely, you know, they're old. there's definitely a, quite a few exercises and studies and, um, and some more serious drawings that some of these are studies of Vincent Van Gogh's drawings. So all of these are done with a pen and ultimately, um, you know, we're almost there. We are almost complete with our with our drawings. Hopefully. I can feel the ink starting to run out piece by piece or little by little. But I'm at a point right now with the ink where the ink just kind of, it's like permanent. It's like it almost never ends. I'm at a point where I can feel it, right? So I have to really fling it really hard in order to get this ink out. So... I just know that I'm almost there and I could just like push through it. Hopefully it doesn't take more than an hour or so, but there's a couple drawings that I want to go back to. <clears throat> or actually there's a couple drawings that I want to, want to work on. Um, and here we go. So let's see, we got, this is from 1887 and this is what I did over here, but it's horrible. So let's start a new page, let's start fresh. It's a new day, which means we could do something new. So again, uh, the pen, this is a Rotring 600. The Rotring 600 contains, I use the refill, this is a Schmidt, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that word correctly, but this is a, it's maybe a Schmidt, Schmidt 9000 Easy Flow 9000. It's a German based company that makes these ink refills. And it fits perfectly, but it has so much ink. So this, this one refill, I filled it at least half, more than half of this, this no, this um, sketchbook right here. And it's been over 30 hours, 30 hours. So I live stream, and then you know I'm able to keep track of time that way. And it's 30 hours of drawing, and it's not like you know little rinky dink sketches. Some of them are like really ink intensive. And I'm just absolutely surprised. I mean, I try to calculate like, you know, how many signatures can be signed with this pen alone or how many signatures. And it's probably like thousands. I'd, I'd assume it would be thousands of signatures can be signed with this single refill. But for now, um, you know, Rotring is a great pen. It's very um, industrial looking, right? It's heavy duty. This the, you can when you, you can't feel it, obviously, because you're watching, but... I'm holding it right now, and it's very heavy. Um, honestly, I don't think that this is the best uh, drawing pen, like a like a hobby drawing or artistic drawing. Um, but it's a great pen. Like if you you're constantly on the move and you need a heavy duty pen and you like the weight, um, you know, because this also has a steel. Like I don't know if this is steel or, or titanium. Um, I'm not, you know, trying to trying to uh, talk about all the features of the pen here, but um, you know, for those who consider a pen, this is a, a steel, and this is not like this will create calluses. This is the type of metal; it's like rigid, so it helps you grip. I think this pen was designed for like engineers or um, construction managers or like scientists working out in the field and they need like a heavy duty pen that's not gonna break if they drop it on concrete. I'm pretty sure that's what Rote Ring was designed for. Not necessarily, um, you know, pen and ink artists that are, you know, trying to, to draw beautiful things. So, you know, that said, I really love the idea of a, of a pen that wouldn't break easily, that I could bring anywhere I wanted to go and as an artist, uh, that can be very helpful. So I decided to, I ended up uh, starting a whole new refill on this pen. Again, it's the Schmidt 9000. 
uh, Easy Flow 9000. And it has lasted me for over 30 hours of drawing. I thought this challenge, honestly, I thought when I originally started this challenge to myself, I thought I would be able to do it all in one sitting, right? I might be able to, it might last like five hours and I could just, you know, draw for five hours straight. Um, that's doable. But so far it's lasted about 30 hours, this ink refill, and I'm still going. So I do at this point, yeah, still going. So at this point, I still have, I have to shake it up in order to get the ink to the bottom. But what you'll see here, but what you'll see here is that, you know, once I shake it up, I can get some of the ink to flow like a brand new pen. But, you know, you draw it a couple times and it starts to disappear. So I really want to take advantage of having gone this far. I will not let a inanimate object uh, like this check me. So I'm going to keep going and drawing and we'll just see how it goes with this pen. I'm, I'm going to draw some of the objects that are in this this drawing right here by Vincent van Gogh. I want to take some of the ideas and continue this study that I was doing of him, of his work. And ultimately just looks like he was like drawing at a bar here. That's kind of cool. I like the idea of sketching at an outdoor event. I just find that very interesting. I love that idea. And interesting to think so see as you can see this is becoming an arm workout to really have to get the ink out so you know not very convenient for drawing but you know if you're out and about or you're like an engineer and you're in the field and you know you, you need you need ink I mean I think it's a comforting thing to know uh, that all you need to do is shake it up a bit and you can get just enough a little bit more before you need to buy a refill and it ends up being more than little just enough. It's a, quite a lot, but um, as you can see, I don't know how much longer. I mean, it might even have way more ink than I think it is. Just because I need to shake it up doesn't really mean uh, it's almost done. I need to remember that because this, this pen constantly, constantly surprises me. Or not the pen, the ink refill. The pen itself is just a container. It's a very heavy duty container. It's made out of I don't know. I don't remember if this is like steel or titanium or something, but it's very heavy, heavy duty. I could feel it's a significant amount of weight here. Unlike most drawing pens where you need to be agile. So, you know, you'll, if you, you have a pen like this, you'll always know if it's like missing out of your pocket or whatever. Um, oh yeah. Engineers, mechanics. This is a great pen for a mechanic as a gift, uh, if you need one, but ultimately, uh, the ink refill, is going to be the, the point of conversation right here because a fine art drawing. I mean, this could be good for fine art drawing just because of the sense of, just in the sense that you can draw with anything. But if you're, you know, buying this as a gift or buying this as something for, for yourself, um, you gotta consider what you're using it for. Are you, are you using it for art? Or are you using it for <clears throat> some sort of some sort of purpose, like working in a certain type of environment? And you know, it's a good, good, high quality pen, high quality gift for for you know even somebody that draws a lot. This could be a good, high quality pen. The only issue for the artist, right, is because this is heavy, and if you're drawing, you know, if you're not signing papers and writing little notes, then the feeling of this pen isn't the most most comfortable. Again, this is heavy duty, so it's got a very, um, there's a lot of grip and friction here. I don't know if you could, it's hard to see, but you can see that this is a, um, a rigid surface here, that this surface right here is meant for you to be able to grip and hold so that you don't easily lose it. But the overall balance, if you try to consider that is not ideal or ergonomic for people that just want to draw you know maybe an architect who needs to make a straight line on the field and you know they need to line it up against the steel ruler take a steel ruler and like line it up against the steel ruler that you know that's probably a good good thing i don't know if, but i'm sure our uh, architects have their own tools but you know if they need to make changes on a fly like on location or something 
Um, I'm sure this could work as well. But, you know, an architect's always going to have their their uh, their tools, of course. They've got their their choices of tools for, I don't know exactly how artists work. I'm kind of making it up. <clears throat> yeah, that's a, that's a really good question, Amir. There might be some color options for this, for the uh, Schmidt 9000. So, oh yeah, so this pen itself has different color options. I think they got a black. This is, this is a navy blue. It looks black, but it's actually navy blue. I don't know if you could see that in the lighting here, but it is actually a navy blue, a very dark navy blue with uh, red lettering. And, and um, so, but as for the ink, I'm sure there are some, some color options. I'm sure this company makes different color options. And just continuing, I'm surprised I continue to get tons and tons of ink out of this, uh, even more than I expected. I only had to shake it up once today and like, I'm just continuing to draw. I'm just gonna totally give up on this fact that I might even run out of ink. It's been going for over 30 hours now of these sketch of just drawing and sketching. Um, not straight, of course, but over time. And I think that's an amazing amount of ink. So I have other pens that feel like they have definitely run out of ink. So I have these other pens that are for art. And you know, you refill it with like an ink. It's a really dark India ink. And, um, like a really dark India ink. And that's used by a specific group of people, right? Artists, um, manga artists, comic book artists, they use that type of really dark black ink. So you're gonna get a different look if you use this pen for drawing, right? You just gotta know what you're using it for. But this is definitely a ballpoint using ballpoint refills. I love ballpoint personally, as far as um, art goes, because I don't know, I just, I can't stand the sound of pencils. That's one thing. Um, I can't stand the sound of pencils and charcoal. So I tend to draw more with more with ink. And that's one thing that may, maybe want to get this pen as opposed to any other pen or any other drawing device is the fact that it's a refillable ballpoint. Part of me wants to like help not litter, but at the end of the day, I know, I mean, you know what? You don't want to litter with plastic, right? So at the end of the day, you've got, so you got this basically metal, metal um, device. So metal is always much more recyclable or reusable, right? Unlike plastic ball points. This, this is made out of metal and of course the spring, right? And I think the only plastic part, the only plastic part comes with the refill. And that's this little back piece right here. So you do, I mean, this little back piece is probably more, probably has more, you have more plastic on a single uh, plastic pen, plastic ballpoint pen, an entire box of plastic ballpoint pen, way more plastic than you do on this. Um, you know, the, the amount of plastic, for those of you considering plastic, considerate of plastic and um, recycling or whatever, it's probably on an entire pack of these Schmidt refills, which was about, I bought a pack of like 10 or 20. It's probably less plastic than on a pack of 10 or 20 than one pen, one ballpoint pen. So for those of you being considered of that, it's, it's very helpful. So uh, T Dot, welcome back. I know you, you came in in the middle of my rant. So welcome back. Hope you're doing fantastic. Uh, you remember the pencil sounds? Yes, I can't stand the sound of pencils. Like I just love the feeling of of a roller of a of a rollerball pen, and I can't overcome it. I I mean I can't overcome it, but um, just the feeling of a ballpoint pen. It just feels so smooth. It just glides, and that is just such a a great feeling to me especially when you're drawing. I don't mind a little bit of scratchiness from like a fountain pen, from certain types of fountain pens, but the feeling of a pencil, it's just like, it's like, I don't know. It, it, it makes me cringe. Not all pencils, but, but definitely some pencils. And that is the feeling I would like to avoid. 
So welcome back. Hope you're doing. What do you? Uh, let's see. Can I take off the plastic at the bottom of the refill? Oh yeah. So I can't take the plastic off. Unfortunately, these refills are non-refillable, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I don't want to test it out on this one, but because otherwise I have to start this challenge all over again with a different pen. I am curious how much ink is in here though, because it's not clear. So because it's not a clear container. Um, I won't, I won't know, but let's just keep drawing here. I can actually test it on a different one later, but for now I need to, need to work on this. I often wonder, cause like, you know, it's so interesting right now I'm copying one of Vincent Van Gogh's drawings and it makes me wonder like back in the day, did he use a ruler? Cause his late style definitely does not use rulers. His later style, the style that we know him for does not use rulers because everything is just curvy and beautiful and like expressive and you know that's what he wanted to get out of his drawings and it just makes me wonder like for his other straight lines you know does he just sketch a lot to get those lines or what so anyway I'm filling in this space now we're drawing 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 sketching in some of these these uh you know, last night when I was finishing up this live stream, I got frustrated for like two hours straight, just trying to get, just trying to get, um, just trying to get, just trying to re, uh, finally use out this pen, but I guess I still have so much more. You're going to get some of the one you got. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Yeah, there's, um, <clears throat> yeah, I got mine on Amazon. And I think they're pretty affordable. I can't remember exactly how much they were. I bought them. I literally, I bought these refills like four, three years ago. And I didn't really start using this pen seriously for until uh, like maybe four or five months ago. So they obviously last. And <clears throat> so I'm just taking some of the objects. I'm picking and choosing what to draw here. And I just want to get a feel for some of his design elements. So I want to draw this little opening right here. And this pen is so tricky because it's tricky because like it starts to feel like you're running out, but all you need to do is just shake it a little bit. And it's like you have like a brand new pen almost depending on how much you draw, how heavy you draw or write. But I can get, for every time I shake it, I think I get at least like 10 more signatures out of it. Maybe 10 more lines. And let's see, let's draw this tree in the background. I wanna get this tree, the shape of this tree here. It widens as we get to the base and kind of maintains this. I'm drawing a, a zoomed in version of this. And let's go tree, tree, and then bring it down. It's a little bit of a twisted tree. See how he does the shadow right there. And yeah, at this point in the video, um, those of you that are, yeah, so I'm just taking, I'm just pulling pieces, little bits and pieces. This is a, like a landscape still life. So it probably took them hours to do this. Maybe even a couple days. But I'm not drawing. I'm just drawing uh, little pieces from it. Just to get an idea of how he makes certain lines. And how he designs certain things. So it can be really helpful. One thing about nature that I find about drawing nature is that nature is very, drawing nature is very forgiving. Drawing people and, uh, drawing people is not because when you draw people, there's always like these expectations. Unless, you know, you're known for a certain type of style as an artist and that could be a beautiful thing of being known for a certain way because then, you know, at that point, you know that you've reached like a natural talent of creating people in a certain way. And when people like you for that, that's a great feeling. I've had that from certain uh, clients. 
from certain clients that have hired me to do things who who they just love it you know and and that's a very interesting feeling to have so with that said right now just sketching out sketching out with this this pen here and let's see how he starts to fill in some of the colors so obviously this is uh brush and ink so there's some brush involved which means that it's a bit more painterly or brush like than what i'm going to be able to achieve with this pen but at least what i could do is Think it over soon? What do you mean, think it over soon? Oh, yeah, it'll be over soon. Yeah, hopefully. We'll see. Uh, don't know. Don't know. But I, I'm not going to be streaming for too many hours today. Yesterday, I streamed for six, like six and something hours just drawing. And by hour five, I was ready to call it a day. But I couldn't because I thought I was so close to being done with the ink in here, which I was not very close at all. Not very close at all. <clears throat> so I can only imagine. So eventually, at one point, I started doing like just crazy drawings like this, just totally just trying to waste as much ink as I could. Just wasting as much ink as I could scribbling all over and you can see some of the ink starts to go away and disappear and kind of get light so it's like an illusion it made me feel like it was about to start ending and you know this one's all the all these lines right here like it's like there was the ink was almost going to be out so i thought i had just finished but no no you look at today you know what would be a really cruel pr prank is if uh my girlfriend i live with her is if she kept re refilling this pen with uh with fresh ink like a new fresh tube that'd be a very cruel prank but um funny idea there did you hear did you hear what i said cat mm -mm. a cruel prank would be if you if I, you secretly kept refilling this with a new with a new uh refill every like every day that would be funny, huh? that would be funny. yes i could do that to you Yes, you could, Never but, know. but you're not going to. I'm not? I don't know. All right, so anyway, people, uh, there you go. She wouldn't do that, but that would be very cool. Especially at the parts when you're like, oh, when am I going to be done? Am I almost finished yet? Come on. And you know, it wouldn't be so bad. Like, the it wouldn't be so bad if... It, you know, if I felt like it was just going to keep going. But I reached a point the other day when I kind of just expected that it was almost done when it wasn't. So that's where it really got me and I got frustrated. So I started doing some, some crazy drawings. And with those crazy drawings, um, we just, it just didn't work out. So with those crazy drawings, I was, I was struggling to, to enjoy the work. But you know, when I'm not worried about how much ink is still left, I can draw more freely. So I'm gonna try not to stress about that this morning, but definitely yesterday, I felt a little burned out at the end from drawing. But you know what, I think there's a lot of artists that talk about burnout, so not to like spend too much time doing art. And while I feel that's sometimes true, I think there's a difference between drawing, drawing with this expectation of finishing something, right? Like this expectation of waiting till the ink runs out because you never know if it's gonna happen. And you know, the frustration came from <clears throat> waiting for the ink to come out or to finish. But I also think that if you're drawing for the sake of art and creating and you, you know, you have enough ideas, then it's really, really tough to burn out. Like if you want to be drawing and painting and you're able to do so, then, then you're probably not going to be burning out, right? Like if you just have this massive desire and you're just constantly doing it for hours and hours a day um, I think it'd be hard to burn out but if you're 
if you're doing it and there's a point when you're not enjoying it and you push yourself past that point all the time like yesterday when I reached a point when I stopped enjoying because I thought I was almost out of ink and my expectations were that I was going to be out of ink and I could just take a break soon um, then I think you could burn out so this is just a quick little conversation about burnout <clears throat> Because I think that the truth is, is if you're not enjoying what you're doing, you're going to burn out. But, but if it, if you feel like it's something that you love or something that you enjoy doing, or even something that you know is good for you, like running, right? I can't stand running, but I do it. And I know it's really good for you. So I just continue to do it and I can do it weekly. And of course, you got to create your own motivations and things like that. But um, let's see. So we're gonna go down and and paint this tree. We're gonna zoom. We're zooming in on this tree fixture here. Just giving it some more more shadow or some more design here. And so T Dot, I don't know if you're still here, but how are things going with you? What are you working on lately? Tell us about a new creative project you've got. If you've got anything. Uh-huh. I'm just watching as new um, new amounts of ink just flow out of this pen. It's, it's out of control. So we're gonna go here and, and draw this beautiful little little branch here beautiful branch and we're going to draw this other other branch here What I'm drawing looks a bit more like pincers, but that's okay. You know what I never never knew until recently, just reading about Vincent van Gogh, was one of his favorite uh, artists, was a writer. Uh, Hans Christian Andersen, I think is his name is. And he's a famous Dutch, or maybe he's Danish. I, think, I, I feel like he might be Danish. But he made all these like children's stories, but... You know, these are, these are old children's stories. So I don't know if you know about old children's stories, but uh, old children's stories are like, like hor horrifying. They're like, hor they're modern horror stories if you were to read them. But Vincent van Gogh loved those. So you just got a few supplies for polishing your pens and pencils. Wow, you really are quite the, the collector. And um, yeah, you take care of your materials. That's really good. That is a really good quality. By the way, you haven't, um, I think you asked for my email. You never sent me any info. I, was, I, was, I actually am quite curious. I hope to one day see some videos of you reviewing pens and pencils because uh, it seems like it's a passion for you, a collector. I mean, if you want to, right? I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, you should. I'm saying, you know, if it's something that you really care about, like pens and pencils, if you love collecting them, uh, and you don't mind talking about them on a live stream, I hope you one day take on a challenge to, to talk about them and and find that niche, carve out that niche for yourself on YouTube. So here we go, just drawing the leg of this chair, sketching in some of the lines and without the expectation that there's there's going to be an end. Maybe there will be no end. Maybe this is an infinite ink pen. I don't know. It feels like that right now. But whether it is or it isn't, that's okay. It feels like <clears throat> there's this interesting thing in... Um, 
in business that I was hearing about that somebody was talking about is like, you know, if you make a product too good, no one's ever going to replace it. And that can be a good thing and that can be a bad thing. You know, of course you want more sales. So creating a, a cheap product that no one, that people constantly need to replace, either it's A, going to upset somebody and people are going to stop using it because they find a better product and they instantly move to that. Or B, you create a product that's like so darn good that people rarely ever need to replace it. But people will spend the money to buy it, even if it's more expensive. So it's like the difference between Toyota, Honda, you know, high quality, very well made cars and, you know, other companies, other car companies, which, you know, I won't name, but we all know the car companies that are notable for having really poor engineering, beautiful design, but poor engineering poor, a lot of mechanical issues. So you're waiting for all this stuff to come in from AliExpress. Very nice. You ordered all your stuff on AliExpress, really? Like, like good, good materials and stuff. They, I didn't know they sold like, they sold stuff that a collector might buy. Like I know, you know, Ali, AliExpress sells a lot of like very generic stuff, but for collectors, I feel like collectors would only want to buy like, you know, top of the line, pens, you know, pens that you, you buy at like specialty sh stores or something. Have you used Timu at all? I used to use Ali, I used AliExpress for a little bit, but then, uh, I recently started hearing about Timo and I signed up. Timo got me to sign up because it promised a, a potentially a chance to win a a free like a free uh, something for free. I can't remember what how they how they got me, but they got me, and I never received the item. But I guess that's their strategy is to you know, give rewards to some people, but not. Obviously not to others. I don't really want it anyway, but I just wanted to see if it, you know, they actually gave stuff away. So maybe I could draw this table a little better. The angle of it, it's a little weird. Uh, the angle of my table. So let's do that. Let's. I need to work on flat surfaces that are angled away from me, and I think what I need to do is I need to create a steeper steeper angle here there we go <clears throat> eBay and Amazon gelasses are really I guess it's good to have patience because uh, I have an Amazon Prime membership and you need patience on uh, for for AliExpress. So I've had products take like weeks, or like I bought like one product, or a couple a couple items, specialty items, and I bought them in bulk from from uh, AliExpress, and it took like two weeks to get here, which I guess isn't so bad. But when you're used to living near an Amazon warehouse and you get shipments like the day of. It almost feels like two weeks to save a couple bucks isn't always worth it. But if you're buying in bulk, definitely AliExpress is the way to go. So it looks like he didn't even draw the line. He just drew, he didn't even draw a line. He just drew the shape. I guess you don't always need lines. That's, that's a good lesson to know. You don't always need lines to define the areas of your drawing. So here's just some of the little sketches that I'm doing right here. Just drawing the different objects that I see in the painting. And using a lot of the pen pen to do a lot of the, the, the work. 
the heavy duty work of creating textures. So let's see, let's see how he draws glass. Let me draw a glass lantern here. So we're gonna start down here. Actually, let's start with the major shapes first. We're gonna go up there. And then draw downwards. And from here, we're going to go up. And we're going to go across. And there's a part of a lantern. I'm going to go up with this. Can't tell if that's supposed to be circular or what, but let's go. I feel like lanterns haven't changed in like 100 years, 200 years, based on this drawing. <clears throat> Except maybe they used to use flames and now they use uh, other lights. Let's go like so. We're going to go cross right here. We're going to get, get another area. Oh, okay. I see what he's doing right here. So it's interesting to note that even he didn't necessarily get the, uh, the exact... Do I got a setup video? What do you mean, setup video? You mean by a setup, like my creative art station setup, or what? So here we go, continuing on to draw out some of these, these lanterns. I like the idea of drawing what I see somebody else draw, because uh, it gives me the opportunity to to interpret what they're interpreting. I think the next project I'd like to do is to copy the drawings of Leonardo da Vinci. That would be fun. That'll be another project for another time for another set of ink refills. pretty good lantern I see I see some of his his like you know the things that he felt was unimportant versus the things he felt was important it's just interesting to see how they manifest into a drawing and you know what an artist feels important because you can tell like you know what they spend a lot of time doing details on extra details but they tend to spend more time, spend time focusing on things like that. Double lines there. All right. Oh, let's see. I got a set of video. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Here's another quick sketch. Just sketching other people's sketches. Up here, got a little lantern there. Just going through, see, seeing little objects that I like and, and drawing them out. <clears throat> Might even be able to just do it with stuff that I got here. Why don't I do that? Let's start a new page. I'm gonna draw this apple, this apple setup I've got here. 
So I've got a couple apples I could draw. Let's do that. Let's draw some apples, right? Good old classic green apples. So let's start with the little, I'm gonna draw a little curvature here. Just to contain the shape so that I don't keep, so I don't go too crazy and make it And then we're gonna go another apple right here. I'm gonna do a pretty angular. Keep some rectangular, octagonal apples. That's gonna end around here. And we're gonna get this other apple. Let's go at an angle right here. And there we go, we got our first set of apples here. So do I got a set up video? And now let's start. It's easy to draw someone else's drawings because you see all the marks that they that they make. But let's close this so I can focus on just, just this apple setup that I've got. And let's go right in here. Um, got a little, little sticker that comes around. Apple sticker, got a little barcode on it. So I'm gonna write a couple letters there and then do a little barcode. And all these lines have to be the exact same length because they're barcodes. They're not hash marks. I was basically making these like hash marks, which you can't do. All right, okay. And let's go right here. And it basically has the center of the apple come around here. Now let's go around, go. Okay. And I'm seeing a section of shadow right here. So I'm gonna lightly sketch in this shadow area and give it to give it some curve give it some curve here and this this part of the apple is going to have more shadow than the rest it's probably a little too much shadow but that's okay so let's see how this goes and then we need to create <clears throat> can i see the pictures i was doing in the stream when i'm done yeah here let me show you right now real quick so this is just a sketch that i'm starting right now it's an apple three apples this is what i did yesterday uh this was at the end the hand right there so i was drawing my hand while i was drawing in, in shadow um but this is when i started to get frustrated about how much ink was in the pen. So I think frustration, you know, I really think about the qualities that you could see in other people's artwork. Um, you know, you can almost like really sense people's emotions through their artwork because it's hard, that it's really hard to hide. And you know, there's a bit of frustration slash boredom. I reached a point where the ink wasn't really flowing out of the pen. So I needed to start like throwing my pen basically, like stamping my pen down. I was like, oh, what can I draw with that? 
can I make? How much ink can I possibly use? And this is another one where the ink was starting to run out. So let me try like make another face. And we got these other ones where the ink wasn't even really coming out. So I don't know what happened there. But here's a here was a fun one. This is one of um, Vincent Van Gogh's studies, or based on one of his studies of one of his models. Uh, let's see, we got hands and a person. I really like how he, I really like uh, this figure actually, her, her face. Um, it's got a lot of character. So let's see, here's a couple other ones. This was originally a, a pencil, based on a pencil drawing, but I colored it all in with pen. Oh my goodness, that's from the cat? Burn. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's based on one of his paintings, so I just wanted to get the composition down there. This was a really fun one. So this is, so Vincent van Gogh had done a, a, um, like, I don't know if, I don't remember if it was watercolor, but it had a brush in it. And I just basically try to copy the line work that he did with his brushes. Another work, another sketch of one of his drawings. Uh, this is some of his figures as well. Threw in a, I really like doing doing this this character. It's really fun to to use all the different line varieties and explore um, explore how to create shapes and textures by just changing up the line variety. But when you look at it from a distance, it's kind of it's, it's pretty neat. You can like see the effect that all of the, the little details have. Here's two other ones from the other day. Let's keep it going. Uh, we got a couple other ones. A little bunny rabbit. I actually started, I, I start, did this bunny rabbit. It looked way different yesterday. But I worked on this bunny rabbit after I started to get frustrated by the way, someone told me to put in a goat's eye, so I changed the eye to that of a goat, but is that you? I don't remember if that was you. It might have been a mirror. But um, basically, after the pen had started to run out of ink, I was I was kind of just messing around and just scribbling on this rabbit. So I think it actually gave it some more, more texture and dimension, which I think is neat. And uh, I think you were here for this one, actually. Yeah, okay, so we're starting to reach a point where, you know, you, you saw these drawings already. Uh, let's see. What else? These are some fun parts. Some other ones. Probably, I probably showed these the other day. Let's go. Go through here. Let's see what else. You know, in, in, in individual sketches that I did from myself. Some earlier ones. More studies. Vincent's work. See, oh yeah, this is one of my favorites though, the sewer. But there's so much ink that I use in these drawings. I'm surprised that there's like not more that the ink is like that there's not more. Or that the ink hasn't run out yet. So yeah, that's that. And let me let me continue on with this apple and see how far we could get. So I need to create Another outline here. And the secret when you shake this pen is that you gotta shake it and like push it down. Get all the ink to go to the tip. You can't shake it up and down because that's just gonna mess up the ink flow. So you gotta really like push it to go outward. And that could be a challenge if you're not, you know, you're not thinking. You're, if you're just going, oh, okay, well, you know, I just gotta get the pen to the, the ink to the bottom of this pen. So let me just do whatever. But let's see. So this apple needs some darker areas. So let's give it some shade. Let's give it some extra hash marks to, to create the, the texture that some of this area is darker than others. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and round out some of these corners here. Let's 
Just gonna round out some of these corners and let's keep going. We're gonna create some shadow down in here. And I'm not really happy with how I did this shadow. It's a little too dark, but you know what? We'll, keep, we'll, we'll make it work. And we're gonna go, and go around. Let's see how we're gonna make this apple go around. So we're gonna go I guess all I need to do is create the hash lines in a way that creates the shape just enough to, to trick the eye into thinking that's the direction they need to go. Yeah, <laughs> the apple with the goat eye. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So let's go. We got to draw a bruise right here. And from here, um, let's see. So this apple starts to kind of like go around, which means I need to create this illusion that the apple starts to kind of come around here. This starts to be the back area here. But all these lines move toward the center. It's amazing how you can do so much with the straight lines. How straight lines can help you to create an illusion of like. Of how an object is moving. Or how the light is moving across an object. I mean, technically I could just draw the apple and keep it simple, but I'm kind of interested to see how I can use the use hash marks to create more detail. Plus I want to use up the ink on this pen. So we're gonna do that. Uh, I draw a lot from the hand, not like the whole arm, you do too, but isn't it harder to use pen? Uh, what do you mean? Like I know what you mean, like, you know, using your arm to draw big. Honestly, I think it's probably also like the angle here and I'm not drawing very big because I'm using a lot of these like hash marks, right? These smaller hash marks. So I don't really have the opportunity to, to work like that. But I did notice yesterday, um, so for sure yesterday when I was doing some of these crazy drawings, uh, eventually I had to stop using my wrist and I had to stand up. I was basically standing up using my uh, shoulder because it became almost like it became very tiring to try to do it with just my wrist. I don't usually draw fruits. Uh, so 
this look like an apple yet? Mm, I don't think so. There's gonna be some some more detail going on in here. Well, let's give a little bit more detail here, and it needs a bit of a shine in this area. Let's see, how can I capture the light around the edge? Maybe I don't need to. <clears throat> Capture some extra areas of uh, extra areas of shadow by adding some extra hash lines in those spaces. But overall, I don't think we'll be able to add that much more detail. You never know. This could be a good study for a a future future painting that I do. I think what I'm missing is some curvatures, some curv curving lines to give it more of a a shift, a turning. So am I using a reference for this? Hey, what's up, Northern Falcon? How you doing? So yeah, I actually have a set of three apples right in front of me, but uh, only using pen, I'm trying to recreate. I mean, I could just draw the apples like really simply, you know, like just draw a couple apples. But I'm trying to trying to see, you know, like like what. what I can do with the, with an actual s sketch. But like, I, I really love this technique that, uh, yeah. So I really love the, this technique of using a lot of lines to draw in to an area. So I'm really seeing how I could push the limits on it. Yeah, I remember, you know, I, I'm still at a point, n Northern, at uh, of YouTubing that, I don't have so many people that I could still like be connected with some of the, you know, a lot of people that, that tune in and, you know, stick around for a minute. But here's the interesting dilemma is I like that. And, you know, the question becomes, how do you do that and stay engaged with, you know, the people that do come in? Because eventually if you get too big, uh, you can't do that. So how do you balance, you know, this, this need for, for expanding your channel and growing your channel versus, uh, versus also being able to be interactive with the people who matter most, which is the people that are watching, right? So drawing a bowl right now, I need to curve it around, around the front of this. So I don't know if many people have, uh, have those, have that answer. Cause I feel like if anyone, you know, gets, bigger they have to decide like how do I stay stay engaged with the people that stick around that like watch 
at the same time, how do I um, continue to to expand my horizons? But anyway, yeah, uh, Emir also loves loves drawings. That's awesome. So let's go with this this glass here that I've decided to to put in. So let's figure out how I'm going to do this exactly. Um, there's quite a lot of details here that need to be added. So we're going to go like at an angle there. And then I like this glass because I don't want to move it from its spot, but here, let me just show you all what I'm working on drawing. So you have some context, YouTuber too. It's actually a problem posted by Markiplier. I don't know if you know him. He's also covered the same topic. Okay, cool. I need to find a way to mark this exact same spot at the exact same angle. Otherwise, uh, let's see. Well, I don't know. I don't know if you've seen that episode, but uh, do you have an answer? Do you know? This way, I don't have to do the research myself. Like, I feel like it should be a pretty simple answer, right? Okay, so here's what I got. Here's what we're working with. A nice little bowl of apple, three green apples in a glass bowl. This bowl has a lot of, like, ridges, but what's kind of cool is these are not all the same shape, so I don't have the pressure of uh, doing this, like, mechanical style of drawing where everything looks exactly the same. So that's what I'm working with, and i got to get it back in the right position, which I hope is like right there, maybe? Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, i got it in basically the right position. Great. So almost the same exact position, enough that, you know, not enough of a difference that warrants any change or anything like that. Okay, you know what I need to do with my apple? I need to create lines that make it look rounder. So I need to create these, these lines that go around to help to create the shape. I might not be able to imitate the waxy texture with a pen, but I will be able to give it its overall shape. Honestly, I might, mm, no, I don't really like that, but really might be infinite. So pen is still going, jumbo ink, huh? YouTuber. Reminds me of a friend who always uses the exact same pen, just keeps on get, getting refills for you. Yeah. yeah, that might be, I actually have a lot, a, a nice little pen collection. But um, usually I use my art pens when I'm out, um, but I just use this pen for, for what I'm doing right now the purpose of let me see if I can improve the way I do this on a different pen but I want to create the, the design of the bowls to, to add more character and life to this design This was definitely handmade. You can tell this glass was handmade. Huh? I don't think so. You don't think so? Yeah. What's that mean? Okay, it just kind of looks like so. It looks very uneven in a lot of places. <clears throat> so it just makes me wonder if it's maybe, you know. So 
I need to round out these edges here. Make the turn a little bit more distinct. And let's go like this. Um, these still need to be pretty big, but. Ladder. And let that come around. And we're just going to have these edges. Oh yeah, okay, so what I can do is I can start to draw these edges as they come down. So let me see how I, how I shift this mindset. So I need to shift the mindset. See if I found out drawing with a pen is pretty fun, actually. Now you could call me Emmett. friend you can't refill oh so he just buys the same exact pen over and over that's i mean that's cool all my pen almost all my pens are refillable and you know what i think it's almost like ends up just barely you just barely save any money because you constantly need to buy like there's so many different pens so sometimes it could be worth it sometimes not like this definitely you know you buy a pen like this it lasts a long time it's very heavy duty um it's heavy and refill lasts more than 30 hours straight drawing. So, you know, something like this, it actually makes sense. But other things, I don't, I'm not really convinced that uh, all my refill pens really make sense. Right, so let me do this. Um, these are going to be the top of my my parts, so let's just draw the tops of them. <laughs> okay, you trying to tell me to wrap it up? <laughs> All right, well, I'm being told that I must wrap it up now, so I know, I know, I'm kidding. All right, I got to wrap it up. That's cool. That's fine. I get it. All right, folks, so you start two days ago. You don't draw often, actually. You like to do 3D modeling, though. Yes, yeah, if you like to do 3D modeling, that is a gift. gift because I try to get into it. I just can't, like, I just can't stand 3D mod. Like, like I try to learn Blender, and I enjoyed it some of it but anytime I don't know I get stuck when it comes to digital art where it's like oh how did how did how did they do it how, what is the best way to do this exact you know way of like changing the lines or whatever um, the technical stuff right like of course the technical stuff gets me but I know specifically where the technical stuff gets me and that's when I want to do something a certain way like an exact way and I forget how to do it, so I spend like an hour trying to look up the way I learned it from like a teacher or something. But anyway, I got to get going soon. I will be back later today, but it's only 9.30 a.m. in California. You ever tried pen and dip? I have not tried a pen and ink like a dip pen. That's actually a quite a bit, a bit more involved than I've ever done with pen. But let's see, it's understandable Blender is overwhelming, but you can always get help. That's right. So digital art in general, I mean, I just never, I mean, not never. I actually went to a digital concept art school for, for like two semesters. But um, yeah, drop that. And like, I just, not for me. Guess I know my limitations. Uh, Let's see, it's understandable. Blender's overwhelming. 
And with that, hey, so everybody got to get going. I hope you all become friends, Amir, Northern, you know, T-Dot, everybody, whatever you're all artists here, right? It's all about community. Hope you all get into galleries and stuff together. It's a crazy time difference. 12.31 p.m. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where are you in? Montreal? Let's see. 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. You out in Montreal? I like Montreal. I went to Montreal for the first time last, like, September, October. I actually remember getting stuck on really simple things for the whole day. Yeah. You gotta be, you gotta stay passionate about the digital art when you do that, but, um, I could just keep going. And... Yeah, you, like it's really it takes a really special person to do, be both the, a, to be a digital not only, not only that but a three D artist because you gotta you have passion for the art, but you also have to be have a lot get a lot of joy out of like solving you know technical problems and I do not get joy out of solving technical problems. I can do it for like basic stuff, but I can't do it for uh, it just doesn't doesn't click with me when it comes to art stuff. London, Ontario. Okay. Right. Well, anyway, everybody, it's uh, time to get going. We'll be back in a little bit. I'm probably going to be doing this later today. So I hope you all get to get to connect and, and uh, share, share each other's uh, art profiles. And then here we are building a, building a little community who sees, who knows where this will go. Take care. Stay tuned.